On this edition, Andre Greipel and his newfound love for the classics. At the end, it comes down to the final. Uh, I mean, you can call me three in the night and I do you 1800 watts possibly, but uh, this is not the goal in, in doing races like Flanders. We find out what it's like to be the centre of attention with Peter Sagan around classic season and what it takes to win. Battle about the seconds, about good decision in right moment. OK, you have to be concentrated for, for five hours and it's not easy. Yeah, it could be game. I mean, it's a real game. It's not in PlayStation. But first, we're at the Women's World Tour talking to former winners of the Tour of Flanders. The Tour of Flanders is special because it's probably the most iconic classic on our calendar. I've always wanted to win it ever since I first did it, so it was a dream come true to finally take it off the list. It's a challenging race with a lot of hills and a lot of cobble sections, so it's a lot about positioning and you need some luck and you do not need uh, bad luck. I couldn't believe it. It was my first big race actually that I did win and then right away to a Flanders, so yeah, that was a goosebumps on the finish line, yeah. Winning a race when you are solo, it's amazing, but winning Flanders solo, it's, it's incredible. For me, it's been one of the best emotions in cycling. It's unlike any other race that you're, you know, elbowing people from kilometre zero. You want to be in good position because every little last drop of energy that you save will build towards the opportunity to win the race. I'm very uh, a traditional girl, so I like to have the moor back because I think the moor has been always part of the Fla of Flanders and it needs to be in. I remember uh, when I did win Tour Flanders was the last year, not last time that we, yeah, we did go on the, on the moor. And there are so many people watching there and really shouting and it's like, like there's so much daisy bells going up this climb. I'm more of a time trialer, so I need to use my time trial strengths and therefore I need to attack early normally. You have never time for resting, never time for resting. And you need to find out the very few parts in which you can a bit relax or eat and drink. And you need to recover fast and get ready for the next left, right, uh, cobbles. <laughs> You need to survive the cobbles as a group, so you need to enter at the front um, to avoid any crashes that will happen or people dropping their chains or whatever. You need to be first off to the cobbles. If you only think that is painful, you will never get over. It's fun on the cobbles. You just have to push and try to make your bike fluid over, over the stones and you just go. Instinct is part of, of the job, is part of, of you, and sometimes you have to leave apart tactics and listen to your body, listen what, to, your, to your instinct and go. When I want Flanders, I want it by instinct. The Arquamont is very crucial, I think, in the race. It's got um, kind of a red flag or a star next to it on my bar tape every time we race there because it's kind of one of the last launching pads for an attack. If you're on your knees at the bottom of that, then it feels just like forever. It's a long drag. You pass through this mass of people cheering for you and the only thing I don't find very nice is the smell of beer and sausages. Bad Bears, that's where I, yeah, it suits me. It's, it's steep, it's short, but it's really punchy and powerful. 
It's only a couple of times in your career where you start that climb at the bottom and think, I'm going to cause some damage here. Most of the time for me, it's about surviving it. The final of the Tour of Flanders is very much a numbers game. The whole race is narrow and twisty and steep and hard and then the finish is just 20k or 15k straight and uh, nothing really going on. But also I think that makes it really fun because uh, still a lot can happen there. Only the very tough ones are winning the race uh, or are to the front. I think for that reason, it's one of the most beautiful races in the planet. There aren't lucky winners. You need to be better than the rest when they're at their very best. It's kind of all the elements are against you and you get through it and you are able to say you've won one of the biggest races. I think you need to be yeah, just a strong rider to win it because it's one of the hardest spring classics. That feeling of knowing that you're gonna win the Ronde van Vlaanderen, that's, yeah, that's really amazing. Regarded as one of cycling's top sprinters, Lotto Sudal's Andre Greipel has also turned his attention toward the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix over recent years. So how does the three-time German road race champion divide his focus between chasing Grand Tour stage wins and peaking for the cobbled classics? The aim is still to be a sprinter. I think I'm still, uh, hopefully, natural fast uh, somehow, but uh, for sure. Uh, my aim is to build an engine uh, towards the classics. These are all monuments. Uh, when I went into a Belgian team in uh, 2011, I started to realize how big this culture uh, is in, in this Belgian culture. This whole cycling thing uh, is just so big. And uh, yeah, I start, somehow I, I got infected by that. And uh, every year by year, I started to realize how how nice these races are. This year I just tried to set a new goal, uh, challenge myself and uh, yeah, just trying to have a good result. Or also just uh, being a better helper than I did in the last years. Here goes Greipel. to attack. So it's the tail of the Germans with 100 kilometers to go in the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Uh, I, I love cycling and uh, I love the monuments. Uh, and um, yeah, I just want to try to be part of it somehow and uh, actually it's also my character to to race like this okay i'm a sprinter i have to really hold back until the sprint uh, but uh, still inside me maybe i'm a I'm, I'm somebody who likes to race actually i didn't change so much in the winter you, you need to be focused on the basic training anyway uh, but i still want to be up there for the sprints so i would never uh, forget to train my my strengths um, but I think the mental part is quite important uh, to set your mind up towards the classics. For sure, you, it's always nice to speak about numbers or whatever, but uh, uh, at the end it comes down to the final. Uh, I mean, you can call me three in the night and I do you 1800 watts possibly, but uh, this is not the goal in, in doing races like Flanders. Andre Greipel on the Koppenbeck. It looks as though he's in the right position, given what happened behind. Positioning before important points is, uh, of course, always a, a thing you need to have. Sometimes every position counts, and um, when you save a bit of energy before you enter the sector, you are two or three positions behind, uh, it could possibly split. Then you made a mistake already, and then you use uh, more energy than you would have used before. You can start a classic and you have a uh, you know before you have a really good condition, but somehow you don't get in the flow and uh, 
just uh, you're just not getting in, in this race uh, and you just don't perform like you wanted to. It's the same with, uh, with Paris Roubaix. Uh, you hate it or you love it. And uh, once you stop really racing in, in Roubaix, you, you, it's, it's the beginning of the end. I think I will be always a sprinter. I mean, Mother Nature gave me this. Uh, fast uh, twitching muscles, so uh, this will be still my aim. Um, as long as I don't see anyone faster in, in my team, I still try to be there for the sprints. And uh, I think the team also still counts on me to, to be there for the sprints, and uh, that's why I think I also get the support. But I don't see uh, a reason why I shouldn't. Uh, combine the classics uh, towards sprinting in the Tour de France. As Andre Greipel goes to attack it, listen to the cheers. Listen to the cheers, Andre Greipel giving it a right go on the Molenberg. This is good to see. Actually, I'm more than uh, Flandrian than they think, but I keep myself quiet. I understand everything. And uh, uh, they are just really nice people, especially when you just take the part of uh, these two really monument weeks uh, where everybody takes time off work and uh, trying to live these monuments and uh, this would in fact uh, affect really every rider in, in who knows something about cycling. So uh, yeah, let's say, uh, I always say uh, when you were not riding for a Belgian team and you don't know so much about cycling then you would know when you are riding for a Belgian team. Does it surprise you how much media attention you get? Is it is it strange? Uh, well, strange. I don't know because I had also a lot of dreams when I was a kid or young and. Uh, all the people need found some motivation in life. Somebody found this motivation, I don't know, in the music, somebody in the gym, somebody uh, in some kind of sport, somebody, you know, in speaking with people, somebody just follow the cycling because they like it. And uh, it's not strange. Everybody, we have something what we like. You don't see these riders come along too often that, that aren't afraid to kind of strut their stuff because he, he's, he's got this uh, charisma that sells well, you know, and, and he's not afraid to ride wheelies after he wins a race. He's not afraid to, to make a joke, put out little YouTube videos of him dancing as John Travolta in Greece. You know, we, we love this sort of stuff and the, and, the, and the general public grabs onto that too. He's an image that uh, many people associate with cycling. Uh, and so he, he's a showman. The character from Peter is uh, nearly the same, uh, private, and also when he is uh, to interviews or uh, to the races. And uh, yeah, we are happy that we have that kind of rider. He is uh, fresh, he is uh, personally, and uh, he talks what he's thinking, and uh, I think also the people like it. To you, is cycling kind of a, a bit of a game? Also, battle, the mentally, battle with somebody, it's uh, maybe battle about the seconds, about good decision in the right moment. Okay, you have to be concentrated for, for five hours and it's not easy. Yeah, it could be game, but it's real game, it's not in PlayStation.
I was standing on the Via Roma when Peter Sagan attacked on the Pojo, and it felt like an earthquake. That's one of those things in cycling that's going to stand for a long time because seeing the rainbow jersey attack on the Pojo, the way he did, he took it in his own hands and then rode all the way to the finish in San Remo pretty much on his own. That's the sort of, that's the sort of ride that stands out in cycling. We may forget the winter years from now and just remember that ride, the attack from the rainbow jersey, Peter Sagan in the 2017 Milano San Remo. We talked about that before and uh, it was very important uh, that we try something before, that uh, we create a small group, but uh, we come to the finish line. And uh, that's why it was a plan and it works. Okay, we don't win, but uh, that's a different story. You know, the things happening for some reason, for something we don't know yet why, but maybe in the future you can realize that the bad what happened one month ago, maybe was good for this. That is positive thinking. The problem is with Peter Sagan is that he's so he's so dominant. Teams are are riding negatively, negatively in a sense to try to beat him, um, and so he's he's getting a lot of second place results because of that. Well, you saw no, Sagan. Have stopped working. There we go. In fact, two riders off the front now because Sagan's refusing to do the work himself. People should be looking at, at Greg Van Avermaet because uh, everybody's blinded by the rainbow jersey, and Greg Van Avermaet's running away with the classics this season. It's not a big difference between Peter and, and Greg, and uh, also the other riders know Greg is one from the strongest. When you uh, are the world champion, then uh, all the guys looking to you and uh, also, when you are a rider like Peter, that uh, have the potential to win a lot of races, not only classic races. If you win this year, you'll be the first double world champion and double Flanders champion. Lo dico. If. If. What, what does it mean? If. Some races are not so important and then uh, he is very relaxed and funny and uh, in some races you have to be very concentrated and focused, when not uh, then uh, you don't have the possibility to win and uh, yeah, I think now we are at that moment, the next two races, uh, Flandern and uh, Paris or Bay is uh, very important for Peter and also for the team. <laughs> <laughs> so one night before the Flanders or Roubaix, or ten minutes before the Flanders or Roubaix, you still don't know what's going to happen. That is how I see the things, and my point of view on the races is that don't lose energy about things what you don't know.
could be it for Gilbert. Come well, on, no. Got it. Sagan, I'm afraid he's not going to win the Ronde of Flandern this year. in Flanders and uh, so we're looking forward for Roubaix. And Thursday we plan a uh, recon on, on the course and uh, yeah another chance to win a monument that was the team goal already uh, two uh, monuments are done and uh, so we're looking forward for Paris Roubaix. Just our game, just <laughs> game about yeah, win or lose, but then we continue again. That's all for this week. Join us next time on InCycle. But until then, keep up to date with us across social media.